All right, guys, welcome back to another Skyrim console mod showcase video for Skyrim Special Edition. First off, this is actually video number two today as I finished off the top 10 PS4 mods video like at 1 a.m. yesterday, so I scheduled it for release today. Also, guys, I didn't know how much work I could do for today's daily mod video as I have some stuff to do today, but I managed to finish it in time. If you do like the video, please hit the like button and share it just anywhere you can. I really do appreciate the support. Anyway guys, that's enough rambling for me, we can just jump into today's first mod. Our first mod is called Our Study Mod, and it's a little difficult to decipher from the mod what this is actually about because it's translated into English from Japanese. But basically it adds a trapdoor from the inside of the Breeze home that takes you directly to the Ragged Flagon, so the Thieves Guild essentially. The mod obviously is not immersive or realistic, but it does come in handy if you want to go back and forth between Whiterun and the Thieves Guild if you happen to be living in Breed's home, or you happen to be spending a lot of time in Whiterun like I do, as it's just kind of like a center point of the map, so it's a good place to stay. But that's pretty much it for this mod, it doesn't really add anything else, it's just a quick teleport from Whiterun to the Ragged Flagon in Riften. Okay, up next we have a mod that is 100% going in my mod library, and it's probably the mod I've been waiting for the most. I wasn't sure if anyone was planning to add it to Xbox, but finally guys, we have a kind of free cam on consoles. I'm not sure how much you guys will use it, but for making videos, it's going to be really awesome. All PC Skyrim mod videos use free cams to showcase mods usually, as you can get some much cooler angles and get up closer and see all the details. Now I can finally start showing some of the mods more clearly, especially when it comes to showing things like player armors or weapons and stuff like that. Now this mod is not perfect, and you can't completely free roam around unfortunately, that's just not possible in consoles, but I'm still excited to start using this one and try get some more camera angles, I just have to figure out how to use the camera properly first. Basically you have an option menu that allows you to go into camera mode, you can then alter your X, Y and Z axis. The only annoying part of this mod is that whenever you activate any of the spells, you snap back to facing forward, and it's difficult to see, especially when you're trying to zoom in. But it's not that big of a deal, it's just going to take a little while to get used to. So this will probably be a mod that you'll see a lot of in future videos. I'm not going to use it all the time, as it's not that quick to use, but if I can get something to look better with this, I will definitely use it for mod showcases. And that pretty much covers the free cam mod. Next up we have a simple mod called Thundering Shouts. This is an audio change to all the shouts in the game. Thundering Shouts changes the audio for both male and females in the following ways. All shout pitches have been lowered by 10%, with a few exceptions for Orc and female Argonians. Level 2 and level 3 shouts have an echo, and most of them have a thunder in the background, which is pretty similar to the way Draugr shouts are. A simple but effective change to make shouts in game feel a bit more powerful, so definitely a cool mod to download. Alright, our next mod adds to the game 10 NPC characters to various towns and cities around Skyrim, with the sole purpose of having some people to hire as stewards for your Hearthfire homes. The mod description lists all 10 NPC locations for you, so we can kind of take a look at all 10. But first, these characters are all actually followers, so if you wanted to know, they are all essential, they level with the player up to level 80, they're good at one-handed, archery, light armor and sneak, and they have a resistance just based on their race. They're not really intended for helping out in combat, they are house stewards after all, and you can recruit them and just drop them off at your home. So they come with only basic clothes and iron daggers, but you can give them better stuff if you want to. So you have 10 different people to hire, and I apologize in advance for butchering these names, but we can take a look at all 10. First is Crati Valius, imperial female who just arrived in Falkreath looking for some sort of estate management role within Skyrim. Friffin Hill, a Nord female who just arrived in Dawnstar. Jinde, a Breton male who just arrived in Morthal. Bunza, an Argonian male who is retired from his work at the College of Winterhold and is looking for some sort of work with his past management experience. Enna, a Redguard male who is in between estate management jobs, his previous being in Solitude and is looking for someone to hire him again, so he's located in Solitude. Eredra, a Wood Elf male who is looking for some sort of management position, who is currently residing in Windhelm. Hesseril, a High Elf male located in the Markarth Treasury. Mardalai Indurim, a Dark Elf female who is looking to use her farm management experience to land a position of management and she's located in Whiterun. Umbram Bar, an Orc female who just arrived in Riften. And finally Zaraji, a Khajiit female who just arrived in Whiterun, who is looking to apply her former leadership experience towards a steady management position. So a cool mod that adds in 10 brand new followers who you can use as your house stewards. It gives you all their experience as well, which was a nice thing. And if you're looking for any of them, they're usually located in any of the inns and taverns and things like that. So you can get some new house stewards for your hearthfire homes. Our next mod is a new sword called Mars, and its design is based on Damascus or Valerian steel pattern. Craftable under the steel section, it doesn't really require much in order to make it, 
but in terms of damage, this sword, while one-handed, is the same as the Dragonbone Greatsword, which is a two-handed one, obviously. So it's very strong, but can be enchanted and refined for even more damage. The mod says it also adds a two-handed version to the game, but my game only has one-handed so far, but from what I can tell, it's going to be the same as the one-handed. Made of Valerian steel and craftable under the steel category, can be refined, enchanted, and will most likely have damage better than the Dragonbone Greatsword. Usually if there's like a 10 difference between swords and greatswords. Overall a really cool weapon mod to download, it's powerful and its design looks really awesome. I have to say the file size is a bit big for a one-handed weapon at 50 megabytes, but the texture is pretty awesome and it's definitely worth downloading. Okay, so next up we have Divine Weapons version 1, Gifts of Akatosh. This is a cool mod that adds a unique weapon into the game. The mod adds a safe box in Dragon's Reach which contains a spell book that teaches the spell Akatosh's Gospel, which allows you to summon a bound bow that has some cool effects on it. This weapon deals no damage to the target, but instead it makes anyone you shoot your ally, boosting their stats and speed. It can also reanimate the dead. The weapon has a level cap of 200 and lasts for 120 seconds, and the effect lists for the weapon are as follows. It has the bend will effect so you can control anyone with the exception of dragons. It has fortify combat healing rate times 10, fortify health times 500, fortify weapon speed by 2.5, Fortify Speed or Sprint by 5, and Reanimate Undead up to level 200. The weapon's effect kind of has an area effect on it as well of 5 feet, so for example if you shoot one NPC with your bow, and another NPC is within a 5 foot radius, then that NPC will be reanimated. So you can have a lot of fun testing out this weapon, it's pretty unique compared to anything else we've seen before, and it's a really cool mod to try out. Our next mod of the day is called Silver Weapons and Armors, a simple mod but a welcome sight for anyone on PS4, an actual custom looking weapon and armor mod. I'm not sure how it works, but they look custom made anyway. This mod adds silver weapons and silver armors to the game. The textures are changed and they are unique as well. Also, silver weapons and armors are changed to elven category and can be strengthened and enchanted. In order to make them, all you need is the advanced armor perk. With the mod, silver arrows can be turned into silver quivers using the tanning rack. The mod also adds two types of crossbow, two types of one-handed weapon, a spear, and a silver shield. So overall I'm not certain how this mod author managed to make this mod without external assets, but it looks really awesome and is definitely the best looking armor and weapon mod so far for PS4, so it's for sure definitely a mod worth downloading. So guys that just leaves us with our final mod of the day, and our final mod of the day is called More Werewolves. More Werewolves does exactly what it says, it adds more werewolves to your game, and it does this in four different ways. First it adds more cage werewolves into dungeons around the map. Next it adds loads of new spawn points for wolves around the outside world, so just random encounters you come across. Third it added random werewolf attack encounters when you attempt to fast travel at night, so be careful what's lurking around when you're fast travelling in the dark. And finally, a nice immersive one, the mod increases the amount of werewolf attacks that happen to you when the moon is full, so that's a nice feature. Of course the perfect mod to go with this one is going to be Diverse Werewolf mod that adds all the custom skins, furs and eye textures to the werewolves in game from the Moonlight Tales mod. So it's definitely worth adding so you can get attacked like 50 times and have different looking werewolf attack you every time. Finally guys the mod author is kind enough to give us the location of all the werewolves added either caged or spawn locations so here they are. Four wolves have been added to the swamp southeast of Solitude, three to the forest west of Falkreath, three to the clear spring tarn, Three have been added to the one that's already in game, to a cage in the Driftshade Refuge, and two have been added to the one that's already in the vanilla game as well, to the Gallows Rock. Three other caged ones have been added to Falgo Keep, Gloomreach, and Falder's Tooth. Everywhere else has werewolf attacks. Either one, two, or three at a time will attack you, and they happen about one third as often as vampire attacks, so that's pretty cool. I'd like to see an option with this mod to set the rate of random wolf attacks, so I can have it a bit higher, but other than that guys, this mod is definitely an awesome one. Werewolf encounters in game for me have nowhere near as often, so this is a great mod to download. Well guys, there we have it, eight brand new console mods, they're awesome, and you should definitely check them out if you like the look of them. I wanted to add another mod to this video called Sleeping Tree Sanctuary, but to to be honest I run out of time, I spent like an hour trying to figure out the quest and how to unlock everything and I had no time to finish it. So maybe tomorrow if there's not a lot of good mods I will add that to that video. Anyway if you enjoyed today's video like comment and subscribe, I will be back tomorrow with another Skyrim console mod video. Also if you wanted to know the next two videos coming out, on top of my daily mod showcases I have a top 10 Xbox mods to go with the top 10 PS4 mods which we had earlier and another fictional lore story. After that there's another top 10 mod and a non-fictional lore video, so look out for that this week. Anyway, I hope you have an awesome day guys, and I will see you all next time.